Hi everybody, my name is Jim with Fullman Adventure Club and I'm excited because today we're gonna do a review, a six month review of the BioLite Fire Pit. And um, I wasn't sure I was gonna do this review because I didn't know if it was gonna hold up to extreme heat and torture testing. So I waited six months and really used this thing a lot and really abused it and took it camping and it had huge fires in it and cooked with it. And I'm really excited because I get to do the review. I wouldn't do it if it didn't hold up and it did hold up so now I'm gonna share it with you guys. So without further ado, we're gonna jump into the unboxing and then we'll go through some details and some testing, show you the app and all kinds of fun stuff. So without further ado, let's jump right into it. So opening up the box here, it is very well packaged. Uh, mine didn't have a dent or a scratch, not a thing on it. You're gonna have your grill top there, here's your burn chamber and uh, everything is inside the burn chamber itself. So once we take the plastic bubble wrap off of that, you can see that it does come with its own little carrying case. A little, dis little caution disclaimer there, there's gonna be our lithium battery right there, our air blower. Pull that out and check it out. Comes with a little sticker, also your USB charging cord. And that basically is just a micro USB, so it plugs into any USB source. There's our little grate for the, for the wood or the charcoal. And get the cardboard out of there, and then we'll also check out the little legs that unfold here. And those just lock into place with a little push button and you're good to go. So the air chamber is right here and that just clips right into place on the bottom and then you push the top in, it just clicks into place. And then you have two handles that you're gonna to have to attach. It's important to remember that the longer of the two handles goes over the battery, which makes sense. So we're gonna screw those in with a normal Phillips head screwdriver. I'm just using my cordless drill here. And now we're gonna attach our other one. And once we have that guy on, we're gonna kind of check out the grates here. So here's the little fire stand right here where you can put wood or charcoal. And here's your grill top, which can counter lever out. So you can kind of take things off the heat or put them back on the heat, so that's really cool. And it's also important to note that the little burn grate down there has little uh, stands. So you lift those up and they attach to hooks that are up higher. And that's where you're gonna put your charcoal for the fire pit or lower it down if you're gonna be using normal wood. Now this is the extra stuff that I got and this is um, gonna be the little steery pokey deal that also can lift the grate and then a thermal pad to keep things from burning underneath it and the solar uh, carry case, which is very, very cool. I really like the solar carry case. Now, as you can see, it's got a really decent solar panel on it and it will charge that thing in a day with full sun in the summer, absolutely. Comes with another little USB cable right there that plugs into the solar panel and into the battery. And then it all clips together with straps and is very sturdy, very easy to put on. And you just plug that right into your battery pack and that's gonna start charging on the sun. It started charging there and it was an overcast day. So you take your straps and you go ahead and secure those, tighten those down. And then if you want to, you can fold the legs if you wanna make it even smaller. So it fits into your car or truck or wherever, smaller space. So that's really cool. It fits up very, very small, which I really, really like. So let me just talk a little bit about my experience with this thing. I've had a ton of fun using it. I like the thermal pad because you can kind of put it down, you know, if you don't want to mess up the surface that it's underneath or anything like that. But it's very easy to use. The battery lasts forever and I've been taking it around. I even took it to my friend's house, which is in this shot here. And they didn't have a fire pit. They just moved into this nice house they were restoring. And I happened to have brought the fire pit. Now it's like 15 degrees out there. And we just had this thing cranking with hardwood for like six, seven hours. You can see the moon just rising up because this is a really sped up time lapse. It went all night and it was the only reason we were able to actually hang out outside. If you left you know, your beer outside, it would turn into slush. Um, so like it was cold. And this thing actually enabled everybody to actually hang out outside, enjoy the stars, have a good time. And we just had it roaring the entire night. And then we did it again the next night. So it worked out great. I never had to charge the battery that entire weekend. We just had it blasting on high. I use it here at my house out on the porch when it's chilly, have some friends over, anything like that. And you're actually not supposed to use this on a porch for obvious reasons, but I had the thermal barrier down, a piece of plywood down, and it was under constant supervision until we moved it off the deck to let it finish cooling off for its cycle. But I think it's really, really versatile and cool. And we just had this, I was punishing this thing. Look at the size of those rounds on top. You're not supposed to do that. You're supposed to use little pieces of wood that fit inside, you know, normal pieces, maybe three or four at a time. I was just torturing this thing with huge logs, 
filling it completely with really hot embers, so much so that the mesh itself was glowing red. I mean, it was just, the entire thing was cranking out so much heat and the mesh never failed, which is what I was originally worried about in the beginning. But I mean, it, it took everything that I threw at it and it really creates a ton of heat. All these nights that I've been using it, it's below freezing and we were all comfortable. And cooking steaks and food, absolutely. These are some steaks and some roasted veg vegetables that I did and it cooked them great. And you can control the speed and the temperature. I've never used charcoal with it, but you can easily move up the little uh, grate and use charcoal in it. And it's gonna work great for steaks or anything else, just like a charcoal grill. And you can kind of control the heat that's gonna come out of that thing. So it's very cool. And the little grill top's very handy and you can move it out, warm some stuff. So it works great. Now let's cover how loud the fan actually is. And at the same time, actually show you the use of the Bluetooth app on your smartphone, which you can download for free in the Play Store or wherever, and get that on your app and control it from about 30 feet away is, is the range that I saw, which is very, very cool. So I'm gonna put a little display of my phone up there. And as I move my finger up for the different fan speeds, I'll just leave the sound alone so you can kind of get a good indication of how loud this guy is while the fan's moving up through its different settings. So let's take a look at that right now. Can you even turn it on? Can you turn it on? Oh yeah, it turns right on. Cool. So we'll do low. We're still getting some smoke. Let's do medium. I don't like it. Okay, so now you kind of know how loud the fan is, and I mean, really not that bad. I'll talk more about that in a second. But also I want to go to a video where I actually take some green and wet wood and uh, show you the difference between having the airflow and not. Because sometimes when you go camping and it just rained, everything is wet, or the only stuff you can get is kind of green and um, not seasoned. And it can be a really long process to get a fire built up with a hot enough bed of coals where you can throw wet wood in and it's gonna dry it out and you know you can burn pretty much anything. And so you're just on your hands and knees blowing on the fire forever trying to get it to that point where you have a big coal base and you can burn anything that's wet or green. So check out this little clip where I do exactly that using the fire pit. Okay, so I just wanna demonstrate, this is the wood, it's kind of green, it's kind of wet. This is what it's like without actually using the blowers, which can burn pretty much anything. So we're gonna knock that up to high. Now the fan itself, when it's on its highest setting, I mean, it does make some noise, but we had it running on the highest setting for six, seven hours during that time lapse that I showed you and everybody could hear each other perfectly well. It wasn't distracting, it didn't bother us any. And obviously you're gonna run it on a lower setting if you have a well burning dried out wood. But as you can see, it really just turns this thing into a forge. It'll burn anything. And while it was smoldering, that fire had been going for like 30 minutes and then we turned it off and went inside and uh, it just died because the wood was so wet. And so without the fan blowing, we were getting nothing. And uh, then you crank this sucker up and it's just like hitting the bellows, you know? I mean, it's, it's gonna blow tons of air on it. And there you go. Now you don't have to worry about it if your wood is wet or whatever, you might get a little bit of smoke if it's wet and green, obviously. But this is so much better than having to constantly get down on your hands and knees and blow on your fire to keep it going or, um, you know, trying to find drier wood. So I really like that, that it'll burn pretty much anything. And now you got plenty of heat and you know no smoke. So that's just awesome. And you can see once I turn it off, uh, immediately that fire is gonna go. And I'll speed this up a little bit because of course we just 
jacked up the you know the the speed there but you can see that over the course of the next five minutes that fire is just slowly starting to die out again because it's green wet wood so pretty impressive i really like that feature now the battery on this thing is really impressive it's 10,400 milliamp hours which is enough to run that fan in your fire your fire pit for up to 24 hours now, I've run it personally on high for about 12 to 13 hours and have power to spare. Of course, you can charge that up using a, a home outlet at home or basically any USB connection. And you can also get the additional solar cover that protects it from rain and has that solar panel on top like I have. And that'll charge it on a summer day one day. So that's really, really cool. And of course, with a battery that size, they do give you the option to charge electronics using the USB port on it. So you can charge GoPros or your phone. And uh, that's really cool because it is a large battery. So you can charge up your phones while you're out camping and stuff like that, which is a great feature to have on it as well. Now for negative stuff, I was looking at the reviews and I wanted to figure out if there's anything I missed or what people are complaining about. And what I seem to notice the most of was that after you've used this fire pit for a few trips and you've gotten that micro mesh, I mean, just red hot, obviously no paint is gonna stick to something that's glowing red hot for very long. So it breaks down the paint in some areas of the micro mesh. And then if you get it wet, some people accidentally left it out in the rain or it was a really humid night and they didn't put it in the case or put it away. And then those areas can start to show signs of rust. And so they're worried that's gonna destroy the mesh over time, which of course it would. And so I'm gonna show you exactly what I mean and show you mine after six months of heavy use. And um, it's starting to get a little bit of rust on the top. And I'll show you a really easy solution that I used to solve this problem and I think should work just fine. So let me jump out there and show you that real quick right now. So as you're looking at this guy, and this is after six months of really heavy use with huge fires going in this guy. And so you can see some of the paint is white and you'll notice a little touch of rust up here where the paint is gone and maybe some humidity or moisture got to it. And that was a really big complaint of people saying that the mesh wasn't gonna last, but I mean, this is a really simple solution to this, you guys. And that is simply to paint it. So if you get a $5 can of high temperature Rust-Oleum paint uh, in the glossy black, you can apply that, just one or two coats. It, it took me all of 10 minutes to do this, just lightly going back and forth so you don't clog any of the holes in the mesh. And uh, just keep going until you have a nice black finish on this guy. This can is five bucks and it's only an eighth of the way used. I can use that same can to recoat this thing probably another seven times. So now you can see it looks brand new again. And in retrospect, I shouldn't have gotten the matte black. I should have gotten the uh, glossy black and that would have matched perfect. But as you can see, it looks totally fine now. It's protected for another six months. So I would just say touch it up on occasion. Wipe it down, try and keep it clean. If you do start to have any problems, touch it up with the Rust-Oleum paint. Problem solved. So that about covers all the information that I really have to share on this unit. I've been absolutely loving it. I will put a link in the description below that'll take you over to the BioLite website and hopefully save you some cash. Maybe I can get a discount or something attached to that code and send you straight over there so you can kind of check this out if that's something that you're interested in. Uh, would I recommend it? Absolutely. I love this thing. It's really, really cool. Um, a lot of my friends up here thought it was ridiculous because we're in the mountains. They have big rock rings and of course they do really big fires, you know, up here when it gets so cold. But after using it and having them over, you know, time after time, they were like, okay, this thing's actually pretty cool. Because it does put out a lot of heat. It is fun to mess with the fan. It is nice that we just threw a top on it and started grilling because I don't have a grill here at this house. And they were like, well, you don't have a grill. And I was like, oh, wait, I do. So we slide that on there and then we had a grill. And also that's very portable. So I could take this to my friend's house. I could take this camping and you, you can use it anywhere. It's really versatile. And so I've had a ton of fun using it. Is it right for you? Maybe now you have the information to make that call. But I've absolutely been loving mine and I think I'm gonna get one for my mom because she needs a little something for the back patio that she can just throw little pieces of wood in and just have a good time in a grill. So I've been liking it uh, definitely a lot. So there's my two cents. My name is Jim with Full Moon Adventure Club and until the next video, thank you so much for watching and happy camping.